My name is Nick, and this is the Sounds of Afrobeat Story. So I'm um, obviously African descent. I'm born and raised in the UK. Uh, my mother is from Zimbabwe. My father's from Kenya. I've always had a very close connection with Africa myself. And um, approximately 10 years ago, I founded an organization called United as One, which is effectively about breaking down the silos that divide all cultures within Australia. Um, so off the back of that, um, I've just been involved in a lot of cultural events, networking events as well. Anything that I guess further stimulates the African culture within the Australian community. Um, approximately five years ago, I was approached by one of my brothers, Davis, uh, who told me about um, a concept that he had in his head about um, African music. And I guess he wanted to use the leverage of what I've been doing in the community to further illustrate the rich culture of African music. To be honest, at the start, I said no, <laughs> because of the fact that um, I didn't want to really connect or interfere with a relationship with a friendship and business together. So I initially said no. But after 24 hours and having to think about this, I'm like, no, no, no. You know, we've got to put those kind of things to the side and look at the greater picture beyond myself and what the community might need. So I said yes. Yeah. So the, the group comprised of um, Davis, Emmanuel, Junior, and I. Uh, Davis um, and Junior are actually business partners before that. They were involved in touring through Australia back in the day. I believe they were the first to bring Ja Rule and Tiger to the country. So they toured across Australia. And um, Emmanuel, who's known well in the community for doing a lot of um, events, Home Based Sundays is actually his as well. Um, so he'd been doing events probably for the last 10 years plus. And uh, so I guess we com combined all our you know, collective experiences together and came up with Afrobeats. Man, to be honest, like I've always been into music um, since I was a kid. Um, my father was always heavily into African music when, from the original rumba, sukus, um, which is heavily Cong Central African Congolese music as well. Um, Afrobeat itself, um, I've only really become accustomed to it over the last 10 years, where it's really, you know, become prominent within the community, I should say the worldwide community. But um, I was never really you know, into music events myself. This is, I'd say the last five years have been my first event structure with music. I was always predominantly in community organized um, events. But um, yeah, I, I, I can say like I've always had a close relationship with music, whether it was reggae, you know, dance hall, you know, obviously hip hop, R&B as well. And but I've always had a, an extreme close relationship with Afro music, which is Probably, I would say the original music being, you know, Congolese, Congolese. Stuff. Sure, like to, to be honest, we didn't have a blueprint at all. We didn't have any blueprint. We, we just knew that our people needed to be seen. Um, our music needed to be heard. 
I mean, Africa has a wealth of, of culture in itself, but um, which wasn't really prominent amongst the Australian community. So we figured that we'd just get music people together. It was a very simple concept at the start. How Afrobeats grew, to be honest, is beyond me. It, uh, we never expected it to grow. It started off with 500 people then now to circa 3,000 people in an event. So um, we're proud of what we've delivered, but huh, I'm telling you back then, we wouldn't have known it would have gone to this size. You know, we never did this for a monetary gain. We did this to actually bring our people together, which is something that you see worldwide, but you never saw in Australia. You'd have small club events and the like, but you didn't have anything that I felt you felt proud to go to, and you felt proud to wear your kente cloth, your traditional attire. Um, so I think that for us, we we gained an extreme sense of pride by seeing our people come together and even seeing other communities, other cultures joining us in celebration under the Australian sun, you know, and you can't put a monetary value on that, you know, like it just brings us a great sense of pride to even find out that, you know, five years later, you know, the couple that went to our first event, they got married, they met at our event. So you can't put a dollar value on that. So I think for us, it was more about community engagement. That's what we had in common. To be frank, the, the biggest challenge we had was being black, you know, to be very honest with you. And, um, you know, Australia has a rich history and um, obviously the original, you know, settlers of this land being Aborigines and all the like and what they've been through. We found as well as Africans, black is black, you know, and we knew that the Western world reflects and they see us as nothing but black. So we knew Im Im immediately, I should say, that as soon as we got out to this community, the greater community, we'd have some opposition, we'd have some questions, which we did. We had a lot of people that spoke to us with a reluctance to do, you know, our sort of event that was considered to be too urban for, you know, their particular requirements. But we had some great people that actually gave us the opportunity and we were able to shine. I mean, I think for black people across the world right now, we know in the race of life, we're always 10 steps behind, you know? So we always have to go over and beyond to, I guess, to, to prove we're of value, which is a shame. And obviously that's resonated by what's happening in the current world today. But all in all, we've actually managed to deliver a product which has extreme value to the community and i mean you can't you can't deny the images that you see where it's a you know a plethora of different communities out there you have whites you have blacks you have people from you know from asia from europe all over the place and it's um i mean it, it even when we have our meetings we know for a fact is we have to structure this meeting in such a way to make them understand that Africans are not violent. Black people are not violent. Our music, I mean, Afrobeats in general is about love. You know, like it's, it's if you, even if you don't understand the language or the dialect these people are speaking in their music, you can tell they're talking about something happy, something vibrant, something loving. So it's not something that encourages violence. It's not conducive with violence. But um, I think our skin tone, you know, has always been our biggest challenge you know, to, to bring out there to the general community with the American culture, with hip hop, with R&B. But Africans were never seen to be on the same level, even though they are black, you know. But it's, so it's great, great to see now that mainstream media, mainstream, you know, television in general, you know, you'd be going to like a shop, like I even, what shop was I in? I think I was in one of those urban type of shops. I think it was Glue or something. And I heard Burner Boy playing. I'm like, that's a change, man. You know, but I mean, for me, it's those small steps that has really transitioned, you know, Africans out of that stereotype, you know. And, um, you know, the other day I even saw Rihanna. She was actually playing Afrobeats behind one of my Instagram stories. It was insane. So I think that we've really managed to break that barrier. The silos have been broken down now. So Afrobeats in general has a very, I guess, universal appeal to people now. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
I don't believe that everybody hates black people at all. I think most people are actually welcoming of black people and uh, people of color, I should say, around the world. I think that Afrobeats has assisted in actually giving people the platform to show that, which is great. You know, a lot of the time I think that, um, you know, black people at times can be misunderstood. Un understood. Look, I'm not trying to be political about it, but that's the truth. Um, there's a lot of stereotypes associated with black people in general, but I think with Afrobeats, all of that's put to the side. Because if you're there, you're there for the culture. You're there for a taste. Everybody wants a bite if they're coming to Afrobeats for some reason or, or other, whether it's the food, whether it's the arts, whether it's the music, whether it's just the culture in general, they're there for a reason. And I think that um, all in all, it's um, positive. To be very honest, the fondest memory for me I'd say would be the first event that we did. We had no idea what we were going to expect. We thought we might have got 50 people, and even then we would have been happy. It would have been just a big house party, so to speak. But to see the transition from you know where the brand first started, because Afrobeats is a brand, Sounds of Afrobeats is a brand, to from 500 to almost 3,000 people, it I can't even put it into words how how it makes me feel as a man to see that people appreciate what we've done, you know, for the community. People appreciate that their culture, their rich culture has been shown in the Australian greater community, you know. So for me, I guess just watching the transition of the brand from day dot five years ago to now, it's, it's incredible to me to see because we never expected that whatsoever. We never expected to hear that. You know, my girlfriend and I, we met at Afrobeats. I never expected to see my husband and I met at Afrobeats. We had our first dance at Afrobeats. It's a very warm feeling um, for us to feel because we feel like, you know what? You've taken our culture, you've embraced our culture, you love our culture, and you're going to continuously come back. And not even that, you're going to pass on the message as to our culture is not abrasive, it's not aggressive, people aren't aggressive. All the stereotypes associated with the culture itself aren't true and people are just loving people people just meet friends and which turn into family which turn into partners so i think that's the component that gives me the most pride and we were just responding to the people that kept asking for us to come because um when we do our show in sydney it'll be about two and a half thousand people and then um, we'll be having people fly in from all over the place for the actual event even from new zealand the furthest i actually uh, met furthest um person actually I met was from Japan for the event you know I don't know whether she came specifically for the event but she told me she had come to the event from Japan but um, the thought process behind that I guess it was like well it was a gamble we, we really didn't know what to expect I mean we know that there's huge African communities in um, other states um, in particularly Victoria and Western Australia but we never knew how to how it would take so um, we did our first event in Brisbane, and um, that was a sold-out show, and I mean, which which was fantastic for us. Uh, then about six months after that, we decided to take it to Victoria and to Western Australia, and those shows were great as well. Um, I guess that we again didn't have the blueprint as to how it was going to turn out. All we can do was to put our best foot forward, provide everyone with the same experience that they had in Sydney and hope that it grew from there.
is. But Afrobeats, I find it's more, it's an open platform for anyone. You know, so come if you if you like to dance, if you like to meet people, if you like to socialize, if you like to enter into deep dialogue with people about culture, religion, whatever it is. You can talk about politics if you really want to, but it's it's just an open environment for people to have fun and to literally taste the culture from Africa. Mm-hmm.